Hi, I'm Dr. Lavani. I'm an orthopedic surgeon at the University of Alberta. Today I'm going to show you how to perform a physical examination of the spine. Spine problems are very common. Every doctor should be able to perform a basic examination of the spine. Let's look at the different parts of the uh, physical examination for the spine. So initially we're going to do inspection, followed by palpation, and then range of motion of the various parts of the spine. And then we'll do a neurologic examination, which will include a motor examination, sensory examination, and reflex testing. Finally, we'll do special tests at the end. At the end of this video, you should be able to perform a physical examination of the spine. Okay, let's get started. Hi, I'm Dr. Lomad. Hi. Is it okay if I examine you today? Yeah. Do you have any areas of soreness? No. Okay, great. Well, we'll get started. I'm just going to wash my hands first. We're going to start with inspection. And that initially involves examining the patient's gait. So we're just going to ask her to walk down the hall as we watch. And then as she comes back, we're going to ask her to walk on her toes. And then walk on her heels. And then finally, a heel-toe walk. Okay, so now that we've uh, checked the gate, uh, the next thing we're going to do is continue to uh, inspect the spine and also do some palpation. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is look at the back and we want to just check the alignment from the top of the neck down to the waist. And we also want to check in this direction here. So we want to check the alignment of the spine from the side profile as well and what we're looking for is the normal cervical lordosis, a normal thoracic kyphosis, and a normal lumbar lordosis. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is palpate, looking for any areas of tenderness. So the first thing we're going to do is start at the top of the cervical spine and just work our way all the way down along the midline, checking for any areas of tenderness. And then we're also going to check along the paraspinal muscles, again looking for any areas of tenderness along both sides. And finally we want to check the SI joints for any areas of tenderness as well. The next thing we're going to do is check range of motion. What I'm going to ask you to do is try and touch your chin to your chest. So cervical flexion, you want to try and look up as far as you can, cervical extension, Look straight ahead and now turn your head to the left. So rotation, the other way. And then finally straight ahead and now try and touch your ear to your shoulder. So lateral tilt. Excellent. Next thing we're gonna do is check for a thoracic rotation. So I'm gonna ask her to turn to your left, twist her to your left, good. And now to your right, excellent. And finally, we're going to check lumbar range of motion. So I want you to lean forward, try and touch your toes. Good. And now lean back as far as you can. Good. And now try leaning to the side. Try and go as far as you can that way. And now to your left. Excellent. Okay, so the next part of our spine exam is going to be a neurologic examination, which we'll divide up into a motor examination, sensory examination, and then testing of reflexes. In terms of motor examination, we're going to divide this up according to the myotones based on the various nerve roots in the spine. So to start with, we're going to start with the C5 nerve root, and that innervates the deltoid muscle, which is responsible for our shoulder abduction. So we're going to have our patient just hold her arms like this, and we're going to try and push down here and check for strength in her deltoid. Next is the C6 nerve root, and that will be our biceps. So kind of just hold the arms like this, and don't let me pull it down. Good. The C6 nerve root is also responsible for wrist extension. So we're going to have her hold her wrist here, and don't let us push it down. Excellent. C7 nerve root is responsible for triceps extension. So you're going to put your arms straight out, and don't let me push them in, okay? Good, excellent. The C7 nerve root is also responsible for wrist flexion. So again, if we have the hand in this position here, 
Uh, we have to resist downward pressure. Excellent. And digital extension. So hold your fingers straight out and don't let me push them down. Good. So the C7 nerve root also is responsible for digital extension. The C8 and the T1 nerve roots are responsible for digital abduction and adduction. So if you want to just open your hand like that. Don't let me push your fingers together. Good. And now put your fingers together and don't let me pull them apart. Good. Excellent. And in fact, C8 is also responsible for digital flexion. So I'm just going to get you to make a fist and don't let me open the hand. Good. Excellent. The next part of our motor exam is going to be the lower limb. T12, L1, and L2 are responsible for hip flexion. So I'm just going to ask you to just lift your knee up just like that and hold. Don't let me push it down. Excellent. The L3 and the L4 nerve roots are responsible for knee extension as well as hip adduction. There's two ways we can test that. One is if we put our, if we put our hand in between the knees here and ask her to squeeze together, that would be one way. The other way would be to have you straighten the leg right out. And again, don't let me push that down. The L4 nerve root is responsible for ankle dorsiflexion. So just bring your foot up as far as you can and don't let me push it down. Good. The L5 nerve root is responsible for toe extension. So lift the big toe up. Okay. And hold strong. Don't let me push it down. Good. Excellent. The S1 nerve root is responsible for ankle eversion. And so what we do is we're going to have her try and lift the outside part of the ankle up towards me. So like that. That's right. And we're going to push down this way. Good. And finally, the S2 nerve root is responsible for plantar flexion of the ankle. As the uh, calf muscle is the strongest muscle in the body, it will be very tough to try and resist that manually. So the way we do that is to have the patient stand and we just have her lift up on her toes one leg at a time. So let's do the right side. Just lift your left leg up. Yeah. Good. And now the left side. Good. Excellent. So the next part of our neurologic examination is to check the sensation. So again, we're going to do that in the upper limb and the lower limb according to the dermatomal patterns. So the C5 nerve root is responsible for the area along the lateral border of the shoulder. The C6 nerve root is responsible for the lateral part of the forearm and the thumb and the index finger. The C7 nerve root is responsible for the middle finger. The C8 nerve root is responsible for a sensation along the ring, the little finger, and the medial border of the forearm. And finally, the T1 nerve root is responsible for the medial border of the forearm. The dermatomes from T2 through T12 are responsible for uh, the torso. So the L1 to L3 nerve root is responsible for the anterior part of the thigh. The L4 nerve root is responsible for the medial part of the leg. The L5 nerve root is responsible for the lateral part of the leg and the dorsum of the foot. And finally, the S1 nerve root is responsible for the lateral border of the foot. The S2 through S5 nerve roots are responsible for perianal sensation. So the last part of our neurologic examination is going to be testing the reflexes. So the C5 nerve root is responsible for biceps reflex. Let's relax. Good. The C6 nerve root is the brachioradialis reflex. And then the C7 nerve root is the triceps reflex. The L4 nerve root is the patellar tendon reflex. And then finally, the uh, ankle jerk reflex is the S1. Alright, so the final part of our spine exam involves doing a special test. And in this case, it would be the straight leg raise. So just ask the patient to relax. And we just lift the leg up. And what we're looking for is for her to tell us that there's pain radiating up the leg and into her back. And we would stop at that point. If the patient complains of pain that goes up the leg and across to the other side, that would be a positive crossover sign with the straight leg test. Thank you. Your spine is fine. Thanks, Dr. Lalani. Okay, let's summarize. When you're examining the spine, we need to look for any abnormalities. 
We need to feel the spine to assess for any areas of tenderness. We need to move the spine to assess the range of motion. We need to perform a neurologic examination to look for any areas of weakness or decreased sensation. And finally, perform special tests for any trouble areas. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy practicing examination of the spine.